Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I've hit 100 subscribers! Took me long enough, but I made it. Thank you for being here. And also, the government just announced financial aid for the arts, which is a start, guys. Thank you. Thank you for giving us a bit of money that probably won't go very far, especially if the big impresarios take it all. But it's a start and thank you. So, by way of celebration, firstly, I'm wearing mascara. I know. And secondly, I'm doing a little opinions video. Are these opinions unpopular? I wouldn't be surprised because popularity is something that has evaded me since childhood, but they're opinions that I have about theatre and I'm going to share them with you guys just as some food for thought and you can tell me I'm wrong in the comments, that's absolutely fine. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Hope you enjoy. Opinion number one. This one's going to be unpopular. Uh, <laughs> riffs are often overrated and unnecessary. Let me explain. So everyone loves a good riff. I love a good riff. It's virtuosic, it shows vocal talent, it shows laryngeal flexibility. We love a good riff. But in musical theatre, it's overdone. Firstly, riffing is like when you put spice in food. Like you want a little bit to add a bit of flavour, but if you have too much, you're just gulping down water and you feel like your mouth's on fire. Secondly, riffing should only be done if you're acting through song if three conditions have met. Firstly, has the composer either written a riff or written ad lib on the sheet music? Two, does riffing suit the musical style? And three, which in my opinion is the most important, does it serve any narrative, storytelling, dramatic purpose? If those three conditions aren't met, you should not be riffing. You shouldn't. If you're in the middle of a song, telling a story, people are singing, emotions are running high, you're like, oh my god, what is this character going through? I'm really feeling that, and what they're gonna do about this thing? And then they throw in a riff, all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, that riff was so good, that singer's amazing. It takes you out of the story, completely. If you're gonna riff, and sometimes riffing is necessary, for example, dream girls without any riffs. <laughs> Hello? There needs to be narrative intention, there needs to be dramatic intention. And there are some performers, even when they're in a show where riffing is kind of necessary, that don't think about why their character needs to riff at that moment. Your job as a musical theatre actor is not to sound cool when you sing, it's about using song to tell a story and to show the intention of a character, okay? And that's why a lot of the time I think riffs are overrated and unnecessary. Crucify me now, I'm ready. Opinion number two. As an actor, you should be able to carry on a scene or a show even during relatively major distractions. Now obviously I don't mean things like show stops. If you are injured as an actor or something like that or one of your cast is injured or you can see something happening in the auditorium and you're like, nah, the show needs to stop, there's something going on, obviously. Uh, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a situation I had as an usher. I'm not going to uh, mention specifics, but I was ushering at a theatre where a very famous show was on. Uh, was it famous? It was famous in theatre circles, I guess. It had some very famous actors in it. It was very high prestige. And one of the actors, it got back to front of house, had been bitching about front of house going in and out of the auditorium because the light was bleeding through. Now, when you're an usher, you need to go in and out of the auditorium. Sometimes it's to radio things about what's happening in the auditorium to management. If you're sitting in Act 1, you'll have duties in the interval that you might have to leave the auditorium to get the things you need. You might have to swap out to cash up. Operational things where sometimes people just need to swap in and out. And being an actor, I can also understand how that may be annoying, like, you're looking at the dark and then all of a sudden light comes through. However, ushers are just doing their job. So to bitch about us and call us names for just doing our job, A, is just very rude. And secondly, an actor's job is just to pretend stuff. We just go onto stages and pretend that stuff is happening and we wear funny costumes. Well, not necessarily funny, but we wear costumes, we put on makeup, we put on wigs, we pretend for two hours. It's not that deep <laughs> and if you can't pretend when stuff like the real world stuff is happening then in my opinion you're just being an arrogant twat <laughs> you know and if you find it difficult to keep going at least don't bitch at people just doing their job that one was a salty one uh, 
but it's how I feel. Opinion number three, resting jobs should not be taboo in drama school. I have been meaning to make a video about resting jobs, but considering the current situation, it seems a bit moot at the moment, but drama schools do not talk about resting jobs. And I think a lot of young actors don't realize how integral it is to your life. I mean, even me going to drama school later and having a more grounded idea of what realities of being an actor are like, even I don't think fully realized when I graduated how much time resting you spend. And unless you've got a rich dad who can pay all of your expenses, you're gonna need to work. And drama schools shouldn't shy away from that. I feel like there's such a taboo about if you're considering resting jobs, especially thinking about resting jobs that you actually want to do and may want to invest time in, which isn't everybody's story. Some people for their resting job might just want something that they can mindlessly do so they can give as much energy as possible to finding acting work some people would find that really depressing and would rather have something that they're doing when they're not acting that they do somewhat care about and i think not discussing resting job and resting job options and the fact that you're gonna have to find a solution for that makes people feel that they have failed somehow if they're wanting to find more purpose in what is going to be the majority of their working life for most people unless they get lucky and i think that would be helped if drama schools were honest with their students so that actors graduating can really think about what it is they want out of their life. I feel really passionately about that one. <laughs> Opinion number four is that the industry in the UK is far too snobby. There is a lot of snobbery. There's a lot of snobbery between musical theatre and straight theatre, which isn't in the States because they do everything. It's just a difference in form. It's not a difference in subject matter it's a snobbery and it needs to stop. The other snobbery that is in our industry, in my opinion, is types of work. The things that immediately spring to mind are cruise ships and TIE. I think there are just so many things that you learn doing TIE because you've got an audience that hasn't paid money and wants to be there. You're getting an audience of kids who are being told by their teachers they have to be there. Now, sometimes the kids are like, this is better than class, so we might as well like make the most of a good thing and not and not push the boat. Sometimes you get kids that just do not give a flying monkeys and you've got to win them over because your audience aren't in the dark. You can't hide behind costumes. You can't hide behind set. You can't pretend that you can't hear them because it's really your here and the kids can be as close as where the camera is right now there is nowhere to hide you've got to be like i've got to win you guys over and if i can't win you over i've just got to keep going if you can do tie in a difficult school you can easily go up on a stage and perform to a paying audience easily i do not know about the difficulties of performing on a cruise ship but i'm sure that there are things that you learn doing cruise ship work that you would not learn anywhere else and i just think it's not fair that there's a snobbery about it no and especially a snobbery amongst graduates <laughs> this baffles me i'm not saying that graduates shouldn't have taste you should know what work you want to do what work you don't want to do but if TIE pays you, what's the problem? Why are you being snobby about it? I've had kids come up to me afterwards being like, that was really helpful. I've been having situations with my brother or my sister. It's really rewarding to know that you're getting through to kids about really serious topics. So why is that a bad thing? Why are you like, oh, it's TIE, it's not real theatre. Dude, just stop it, just stop it. You're being a fool, you're being a clown. A whole theatre, post-covid just stop with the snobbery please thank you number five the uk theatre industry doesn't support musical theatre writers and they should i don't think that's an unpopular opinion it's just a fact there are organizations that are trying really hard to work against that so there's beam there's mercury musicals there's signal and that's all great but where's the National Theatre? Where's the Royal Court? The Royal Court is like the new writing house in London and they never do any kinds of musicals. Like musicals can be small. Musicals can be one person. So it's not a scale thing. It's not, oh, the Royal Court is too small. They did put on a musical, but they called it a play with music. A play with songs is a musical. <laughs> That's the point. 
and I get maybe it's because you you have an audience and you don't want to like tarnish the, your reputation as like oh we're a serious theatre producing new writing house again that just goes back to the snobbery against musical theatre musical theatre is legitimate we in the UK could make our UK version of Hamilton if we put investment and time and care into our musical theatre. Hamilton wasn't, didn't kind of emerge from the ether fully formed. It was hard work and graft and investment and time. And we don't do that with our musical theatre writing and we should because otherwise we're just going to end up with everything apart from the two mega musicals if they survive Covid being imports from America. I'm getting heated. The only British made musical theatre that was on the West End to my memory before obviously the West End shut down was everyone's talking about Jamie, Only Fools and Horses and Juliet and Six. That is four musicals out of there's like over 30 I'm sure over 30 West End theatres and only four of them were British musicals. Oh Matilda, I forgot about Matilda. Matilda is also so five five musicals. We should invest in our musical theatre because I don't want the West End to just be like discount Broadway and I don't want any bits that are not discount Broadway to be stuff that was written in the 80s. Opinion number six, NT Live should not be a substitute for touring. Now I know from talking to people who know more about NT Live than I do that NT Live has correlated with improved theatre attendance both to the National Theatre and locally where NT Live is shown in cinemas and things so NT Live is by no means bad. Recorded theatre is not the same as live theatre and I think if the National could tour again in conjunction with NT Live I think it would be a lot more beneficial to regional theatre as a whole. Really really famous actors I doubt would want to tour all around the country and I and I understand that also, looking at some of the sets that The National has had in their recent productions and things, that would be really logistically difficult to tour as is. Why not create small scale stuff specifically to tour? So you NT live the stuff with the massive sets and the really famous people, you NT live those and everyone can be like, oh my gosh, National Theatre, this is such a good show. Then you get an NT show that maybe does a month in town in one of the smaller spaces in the Dorfman for example with lesser known actors like a small cast intimate thing limited set that would be very easy to tour market the crap out of it obviously saying it's going on tour you put the play into small local venues art centers town halls things like that so that the venue that you go to the small venue gets the increased revenue of people wanting to come and see an NT show and you're taking live theatre to the regions that aren't just the musicals that can afford to tour. I just think that would be a really really great initiative because I think there's been a big disconnection that has become so much more apparent with this crisis between the general public and theatre. It's very elitist. There are so many people who think theatre is not for them and I think touring live theatre to audiences as well as you know having NT live I think would be a way to heal that breach a little bit. Opinion number seven, drama schools should teach all of their students all of the disciplines involved in putting on the show. Obviously not to proficiency because if I'm an actor I'm not going to want to learn how to be a stage manager, I'm learning to be an actor, but everyone should have an understanding about what everyone else is doing. Directors should have to act like they should because not only are there some directors that don't see actors as creatives in their own right and talk down to actors, there are some directors who are not good at directing actors because they have their vision but they can't translate their vision into a way that actors can actually take on board. It's all very well saying to an actor, on this line you move over here. As an actor, if you're doing it properly, there's an element of but why am I moving? What's my motivation? When we know why we're doing what we're doing, it will be convincing to the audience, right? Some directors aren't good at that. Some directors are literally like, you need to move there. And when we say why, they don't help us realize why, they tell us why. And you know, the more experience you get as an actor, the more you can do your own problem solving or, you know, use technique to make it work. But we want to be on the same page and know why we're doing what you're telling us we're doing. Does that make sense? So directors, absolutely, 
should act in their training at the very least. And I just think it would help keep superiority and egos in check because it makes people more likely to empathise, which I think is very important. Opinion number eight. Dance classes are scary. <laughs> As a musical theatre person who is not a dancer, I, I would consider myself a confident mover. If anyone I've worked with wants to question that, feel free. Um, but that's how I would describe myself. I've always been quite good at picking up choreography, but you know, ask me to do fuetes, I'm gonna be on my ass. So I'm not a dancer. So when it comes to class, okay, when it comes to going to pineapple when it's open slash when it was open and trying to figure out what class you should be in it's like which class should i be in especially because at pineapple like a mostly when you look through the windows at the commercial classes like those people are just they're so good <laughs> and they know they're good it's when you look at the commercial classes and everyone's whipping their hair and being all sexy and they're like high heels and i'm like i can't even walk in heels and it's intimidating i know they don't mean it but it is intimidating and then at pineapple beginner isn't beginner right <laughs> if you've been to pineapple you know beginner isn't beginner so you're like i could go to a beginner's class because i am a beginner like but then i'm gonna go in there and people are gonna have their leg like at 90 degrees and i'm like ciao i cannot do that <laughs> i cannot lift my leg that high and then you feel like an idiot and then like do you have the right clothes this is all very petty and it's like my inner teenage insecurities coming out but it is scary it's it's a scary thing and i just i I can't speak on how the dance community can make it better for people like me. And I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I think there are a lot of actor singers who feel that way. And um, yeah, that's, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Opinion number nine. I'm gonna say the opinion and then explain because it's more nuanced than the saying the opinion is gonna sound. Actor muso shows by and large are just to save money. There are times when actor musicianship absolutely works. So for example, Once the Musical absolutely worked. In my opinion, it tends to be the shows that are written with actor musicianship in mind. So like I said, Once, These Trees Are Made of Blood is another one. And I think that's because when you write a show as an actor musician show, so like the actors playing is an artistic choice. And so it's integrated into the fabric of the show and it works so well. I, I think that's a really useful storytelling tool. So I'm not saying that actor musician show should not happen. I am now an actor musician, that would be stupid for me to have that opinion. But when it comes to adapting a pre-existing show that was not made as an actor musician show and making it actor musician, I think that on the whole is harder to do. There have been shows I've seen announced, haven't seen, but seen announced that said that they were actor musician shows. It may have worked brilliantly, but from someone just seeing that announcement my first thought was why because i didn't see why it had to be an actor musician show and i think if you're going to do that you really need to think about what is gained by making a show actor musician in my opinion because when it's just tacked on to save money it just doesn't sit right with me i guess because it's difficult to ask someone to play an instrument if it's a corded instrument or an accompanying instrument sing as well and act and do blocking which could be just general movement about the stage or choreography that's a difficult thing to ask a performer to do that's a lot of things they've got to concentrate on obviously from an audience perspective if you're not seeing all of that stuff going on it might just be the impressive spectacle of oh my god they're also playing all of their instruments and i get that like spectacle alone and money saving alone i think is a poor reason to make such a bold artistic choice that's just, that's just what i think about that and number 10 my final opinion stunt casting isn't always bad let me explain because a lot of actors feel all types of ways about stunt casting i'm there i feel you but it's not always bad editing me with graduate me in the background i'm talking about the pre-covid times where you'd have one celebrity stunt cast in a show post-covid stuffing everything with celebrities would not be good please don't do that because us unknown people need jobs as well thank you bye <laughs> And this is when it is not bad if these four criteria are met. Can the celebrity actually do the job and act the part? Can the celebrity do their actual job 
and sell tickets for the show. Are the producers being shady about it? Is everyone else being paid fairly? If those four things are happening, then I don't see the problem with stunt casting. And I think oftentimes when all of those things are happening, we as actors don't see the stunt casting that is happening. Case in point, Imelda Staunton in Gypsy. No one calls Imelda Staunton in Gypsy stunt casting because she was amazing. I, that, you could just end that there. She was amazing. But she could act the part. Pretty sure there were people in that audience who were just coming to see Dolores Umbridge in a show. I'm assuming that everyone was paid fairly, like West End contract stuff. And nothing, at least to public knowledge, shady happened in terms of behind the scenes. So no one thinks about it as stunt casting, but it was. There were people who were just there to see Imelda Staunton in something. Whereas when a celebrity is cast that can't do the job, and they're not the right casting, people are being treated badly behind the scenes, then we're like, why don't you give it to an actor who can, who can do it? And I completely agree with that. But also I think just to say blanket that stunt casting shouldn't happen, I think we're deluding ourselves if we say that because in commercial theatre you need to get bums on seats. Yes, no one should be not getting that job when they are better at the job, that shouldn't be happening, but there are a lot of the audience going public who go because they want to see what's their face off TV. And until we instill a better relationship between the general public and theatre in general and break down those barriers that a lot of the public have, that theatre isn't for them, that's the way it's going to be. What we want to aim for is stunt casting that people don't think is stunt casting. I hope that's something that maybe producers in the future will take on board. I don't really know what this opinion was, I kind of ended up rambling, but um, yeah. We'll fix it in editing, I guess. So, those are my opinions, maybe unpopular, maybe not, about theatre. I hope you found this video enjoyable. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It will really help me to grow my channel above 100. I can't believe I finally made 100 subscribers. Also, follow me on social media, links down below. I also have a blog on my website, so if you want to hear some more kind of in-depth thoughts about things, check that out. Stay tuned for more theatre content from a UK perspective, and I will see you all in my next next video. Bye friends!